My guest today is Adrian Pine, a project professional through and through. In a career lasting nearly four decades, Adrian has led or rescued projects in 11 industries and the public sector. He says he's semi-retired and currently supports My Melanoma, a new cancer research organisation, as their head of governance. There are two trends, the increase in projectization of work and the spreading of agility beyond IT departments that focus his interest in business and project agility and what he terms organisational project management, a model for enabling projects to thrive. He speaks, lectures and writes on this topic to help organisations gain value from project-based activity rather than wasting their investment. Welcome, Adrian. Thank you very much, and also for that glowing introduction. Adrian, every week there's there's exchanges on LinkedIn. There's a few individuals that seem to be bashing heads with each other on a regular basis. They debate the merits of different approaches to project management. Some argue it's either agile or waterfall. Some argue that it's a mixture. How would you define agile project management? I think we have to start with the um, the Agile Manifesto, which is now over 20 years old um, and clearly was defined for uh, better production and development of software, but has long since been adapted to many other fields like marketing, engineering, finance, and of course, project management. Um, and there are four values and 12 principles that to my mind still provide the most coherent uh, definition of what agility means. So, um, and the important thing I think is then for different fields and areas of work to adapt those four values and 12 principles, all of them, uh, to different areas. And the same is true, I think, in, in project management. And not only do you have to adapt all four values and all 12 principles, but you have to adapt it to all of project management. And there does seem to be a bit of an obsession by some agilists with waterfall, which to me is just a life cycle because project management has never been defined by a life cycle, not in my dear nearly 40 years in the profession. It's never been defined by a life cycle. Uh, it's all sorts of things. Um, the mechanistic side from project, uh, from scheduling and planning, uh, monitoring, risk management, et cetera, through to the more people aspects like leadership and team building um, and uh, stakeholder management and communications and, and the like. Uh, so, but to answer your question, so the starting point to say has got to be the values and the principles of the Agile Manifesto. What does that mean for project management? It doesn't mean a life cycle. Uh, what it does mean is uh, an awful lot of things. I'll give you one example, just uh, just one example, uh, that of leadership. And I liken agile leadership. There's a term that some use, which is called hands-off leadership, which doesn't mean to say that, say, project managers should say, OK, teams, you know what you're doing, go off and do it and never contact them again. It's it's a bit more like a parent teaching a child, a uh, very young child, how to ride ride a bike. And there comes that point where the where the parent takes their hand off the back of the saddle, and the child goes wobbling off, getting better and better on their own. But the parent's not standing back, and as the child gets further and further away, they're usually trotting along uh, closely behind, ready to intervene if they're either shouted for by the child who says help. Uh, or indeed, if they look and they see there's a dog coming or a lamppost or something, and they think, oh, now I need to intervene, I'll go and intervene. And so that, to me, is an example of it's it's doing just enough leadership. And that term, just enough, is one of the hallmarks of agility in any work area, whether it's software project management, engineering, or whatever it is, only doing just enough of what you uh, what you need to do. So if you kind of take that and uh, adapted uh, adaptability, flexibility, etc., true empowerment of teams, um, and you apply that right across the whole gamut of project management, you get agile uh, project management. Adrian, that's a fascinating example. I could really understand that one. That that whole concept of. I'm letting the team actually get on with what they're doing, but I'm close enough to intervene. Exactly. But coming coming back to your 
sort of original comment that it all comes back to the Agile manifesto. Mm. There's, there's now a lot of Agile approaches and techniques. I mean, I can think of Scrum, Kanban, Agile project management, you know, notably the Agile businesses, consortiums, project management. Is there, what is the difference between them? And, and if you were a purist and saying, you know, they do or they do not reflect the, the essence of that manifesto, you know, how would you describe the difference between them? And do you think they are true to that original concept? Um, I think there are two answers to that. The first one is, I'm going to bizarrely say, apples and oranges. Uh, I mean, apples and oranges are both clearly fruit, but they look and taste different. Uh, and you, and it's, it's fairly difficult to confuse them. And the same is true with different, um, shall we say, adaptations of, of agility. So something like Scrum, uh, which most will accept is an agile software development approach, although even within the software world, there's argument about that, but I'm going to leave that to them to argue about. I'm going to, I'm, I'm comfortable that it has an, it, it, that it does represent software development, uh, agility. Um, and it reflects the values and the principles of the Agile Manifesto. It's not the same. And sadly, one of the most common and expensive mistakes is when an Agile approach from one work area, like software development, is then lifted and dropped into another work area, like project management, um, and say, oh, let's let's take Scrum and we'll use that to manage projects. Um that fails almost inevitably. And it fails because they're designed for different things, project management and software development. They're clearly related because you get a lot of IT enabled projects, but you can have a software development certainly doesn't have to and commonly does not take place within a project, within a project uh, wrapper. So um, I think the important thing is to always ask the question, what agile are you talking about what agile do you want so the things that say scrum and the agile business consortiums excellent uh, 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 guidance on uh, project management agility what they have in common is the agile manifesto at their as as their basis but they're not the same and they're not intended to do the same things and things really start to go wrong when you use the wrong tool uh, for a particular uh, purpose. But, you know, with so many competing approaches all claiming to be able to solve whatever problem it is that you have, and I'm sort of making an extreme case there, you know, if an organization's looking at the concept of becoming more agile, however they describe that, how on earth can they decide what's the best approach for them? You know, because the industry doesn't necessarily rank them and says, you know, this is better for this or that's better for that, apart from those obvious ones that you talk about. Mm. But as you say, even with Scrum, it's been taken out of a software development where it is clearly able to be iterative and being used in other places where it clearly is not very easy to be iterative. So how can an organization decide what is the best approach for them? Well, to an extent, of course, organizations have been doing this for an awful long time anyway in, diff in different fields. And, you know, how, for example, have companies or organizations chosen which project management method to go with in the past? Do they go uh, with, with, with PRINCE2 or do they go with uh, APM body of knowledge? Do they go with PMI body of knowledge? So if, if you like, that sort of evaluation, which which often has more to do with the nature of that organization or its or its culture or even its geography. So, for example, if you're in the United States and you're a company operating there, you are going to be using PMI. It's as, sim it's as simple as that. It's it is pretty much a close, a close, close shot. Uh, whereas uh, perhaps over here in the UK and, and, in, and in Europe, uh, organizations can can be more, rather more sort of uh, 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 free. But when it comes down to to specifically, I guess, try, try and answer the question um, about the a bit agile techniques. Again, I come round to saying, well, what are you wanting to do with uh, 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 with agility? And um, you know, and things like Scrum are and extreme programming and the like are designed for software development. And that's all they're designed for. Uh, and if you want to use 
um, some sort of development approach, but in a different sphere like marketing or engineering or whatever, um, then what you need to do, I suggest, is actually go back to the ad, to the Agile manifesto uh, and say, right, how what what does what's the work that we're trying to make agile, and how can that be made to be consistent with the Agile manifesto? You might take lessons like iterative working from something like Scrum. You might take uh, a technique like Kanban, which of course comes actually. Um, uh, from the car, from car manufacturing uh, in Japan in the late 1940s, but has been adapted here, there, and everywhere. I'm actually using Kanban boards as one of the techniques we're, we're using to help us uh, manage how we build the, the new cancer research organization. And of course, it was never designed for that, but we've adapted Kanban so that we can very easily and quickly keep track of of, uh, of, of key activities and key outcomes. Uh, on our on our journey to building that organization so it's i think it's about sensibly adapting things and there's no doubt that things like things like scrum um shall we say some lessons have been taken if what if what an organization is trying to do is do a development approach but but not in software development in some other work area you can certainly do that but i would always say then by all means do that, take some lessons, but go back and test it against the values and the principles in the Agile Manifesto. And wh whatever you're doing has got to be matched to and, and uh, consistent with all four values and all 12 principles, because that's what agility is. So if, if, I, if I just explore that a little bit further, so an organization could actually have a number of different agile techniques within that organization working in different areas mm. from your consulting experience have you had a client that's had multiple agile techniques and if you have how do you deal with the internal politics where one group say my technique's better than your technique and you should try my technique or don't those turf wars exist oh uh, they they undoubtedly do exist but i think they are already um, i think they always have done to 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 some degree, but let me give you a sort of a, a, a little example. I, I thought of uh, something I came across a, a few years ago and asked to do to give a little bit of advice on, uh, and it was an IT enabled project which was developing a uh, a, a, a new uh, sort of sales front end um, for a, a company, um, and in and so that was a had a project wrapper, and there were two key outcomes. One was the new software sort of sales system uh, that the front office people would use. And then, of course, the front office people had to be trained to use it. So there was a training outcome. So in that project, uh, there were three completely different frameworks. There was a software development framework. There was a training development framework. And, of course, there was a project management framework wrapped, wrapped around all of them. Uh, and the training people knew what they were doing. Interestingly enough, the training people uh, learned quite a lot from the software development. There was an agile coach helping the software development people. And, and although that person was a software development agile coach, uh, because they, uh, they were talking to another, you know, training frame as uh, so a development framework, they were able to sort of, um, uh, make that leaner, shall we say, make that more agile. And it worked very, very well indeed. But initially, the trainee people said, we know how to do this and we don't need to talk to anyone else. We'll just come in and do our and do our thing. But actually, they, they quite liked some of the things they were seeing on the software front and learn and learn from that. Um, so there we go. Adrian, you, you mentioned the lean word. So do you <laughs> believe lean and agile go together? Hmm. In, in my book, Agile Beyond uh, IT, which probably there'll be a caption to, stuck in this somewhere, um, I, I do briefly give my own take on this. And uh, lean and agility have an awful lot of characteristics in common. But I, I think it's actually quite, uh, better to actually use them for different purposes. I quite like, because lean, again, really evolved from the gradual improvement of repeating process. So things like a manufacturing process or whatever that goes on co continuously and how do we, and how do we improve that? And in, and in point of fact, that's 
in a sense, where Kanban came from, because it was seen as how do we improve this uh, this production process? And people come up with ideas, and then they were carried through. Uh, so, and and lean kind of was one of the things that, that came came out of that. And I think it works great for that. Whereas I quite like to you to 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 keep agility. Uh, for things that, that are rather more finite, whether it's software development, um, of a, of a, of a new, uh, uh product, uh, or whether it's uh, the management of a project or, or whatever. But there's no doubt that they have many, many characteristics in common. But I just think it helps people be less confused if they say, let's keep lean for improving continuous process and, and, and use agility for where you've got finite uh, outcomes you've been involved in program project management as you say for many years you've written a few books on it you've been long. part of some teams and groups of looking at it in detail do you think agility is a fad do you think it's going to pass and it's going to be the next big thing or do you think with remote working with the pace of change there is today do you think agility is just going to be a natural way of working for most organizations? I think the answer to that is twofold. One, what does the evidence say? And B, uh, has it become embedded? And I think there's no doubt that it has become uh, em- embedded in the thinking um, and indeed in leadership of many organizations. It's, for example, still the def- uh, supposed to be the default software development approach in UK government's IT strategy, uh, and it has been for some years. Whether on, um, I didn't say it was necessarily embedded nor done well, but nonetheless, it's it's the it's the de- it's the default. Uh, and there's many slip between uh, a cup and lip, as as, as they as they say. Um, then. Uh, also, there's a great deal of research. You've got numerous articles from Harvard Business Review to Gartner Research uh, around the uh, d- d- um, uh, proven value of agile software development if it is done properly. And that's a big if. Uh, wider agility, business agility in 2021, for example, PA Consulting produced two back to back reports. The key message from that was that agile businesses are more profitable than non agile businesses. So, so the research is definitely there. The agile uh, manifesto has been with us for over 20 years and has spread its wings, shall we say. But I would also argue that agility is way, way older than that. And I did a slightly tongue-in-cheek blog, um, I think back in 2021, that applied the entire Agile Agile Manifesto to the Roman legions and how they operated, demonstrating that the Roman legions were completely agile uh, from their their leadership down to how they uh, operated at their lowest lowest uh, lowest levels. Um, so which, which, which is on LinkedIn and people can go and find if they're, uh, if they uh, can't sleep. Um, so, but, but I think agility has been with us for, for certainly at least 2000 years and the agile manifesto, uh, still the most coherent definition about what constitutes agility is now 20 years old. Um, and I think, I think as well mature and is definitely with us to stay. It's, it's got proven value. It's as simple as that. I bet the um, I bet the centurion actually dealt with uh, soldiers that brought bugs into the system far more <laughs> aggressively than maybe the current project managers do with uh, uh, with developers. You might say that I couldn't poss- possibly comment. <laughs> Adrian, it's been fascinating talking to you. We could probably go on for a long, long time, but you know, many thanks for sharing your thoughts and your wisdom in the in the world of agility. Thank you very much. A great pleasure. Thank you, Richard.